Today we're unboxing brand new flexible solar panels and we're installing them on top of the camper van with some space age industrial grade velcro. It's cool. Lots of good info to learn and entertainment. Also screw ups. I got four awesome flexible solar panels for the top of the camper van, but you could use these for boats, your house, etc. You know, I, I say etc. because I can't think of what else you could use them for, but I'm sure you're creative enough to figure out whatever you could use uh, your solar panels for. But anyway, they're, they're great panels. Let's open up the box and let's see what we get inside. It's like a Kinder Egg, but the chocolate is the cardboard and the toy is too big for your toddler to choke on. We got some nice feeling foam insulation here. This is the packaging for the replacement panels I got. If you remember in the last videos, uh, two panels stopped working on, on the roof of my camper van, but the company sent me two brand new ones for free. Dear valued customer, etc, etc. I don't need the free gift you're offering, but I'll review the panels anyway. Overall, they're great and they do the job. It's not normal that two of my four panels would die so quickly after I got them, but it's still new technology with the flexible stuff, and I can make a video out of it, so I won't complain too much. Some instructions too on wiring, these are actually very helpful. We cover all of that and all the different ways to attach solar panels and batteries in the, in the ongoing solar series, uh, the, which you can find the playlist for that in the video description here. I did talk about this in the first solar panel video, but the flexible panels are not bendable. I mean, there's a big difference between flexible and bendable, so like, don't try and make solar origami. We put on industrial velcro to attach the panels, uh, but as we saw in the last video, it was probably overkill. I mean, it's very hard to get off and, and more than you probably need. This is how much I put, it, put on before, and this is how much I'm going to put on now. Thinner strips and less of them. Let's take these outside and slap them on. Uh, but it's a bit dirty, so let's wash off the roof, and while we're at it, we'll just wash the rest of the van really quickly. With the two panels that are still working, we're at 14.7 volts coming in. Let's pop up on top of the van and get these panels all situated. Overall, I've been impressed with the flexible panels and the solar system I've set up in general. It's been cool recently, so the fridge doesn't have to work that hard to keep it, you know, everything cold, and I don't have to run the fan constantly. But even when I did, I could power my laptop and Wi-Fi hotspot for as long as I wanted. And I really can't help stress how invaluable that is, especially if you're addicted to the internet, like myself, and of course everyone else I know. <laughs> it gets pretty bad sometimes, I have to de detox from the ADHD internet uh, stimulus if I want to do, if I want to read a real book or do some legit study. Yeah, that's one reason I don't like doing real work on the internet, because it's too easy to get distracted. Uh, there's probably no solution to that other than strong self-discipline, which, you know, I'm working on, but, you know, that's its own thing. <laughs> Thank you, solar panels, for allowing me to be enabled. And, yeah, keeping my food cold, too, that's pretty great. There's extra slack in the wires, so I'll take these zip ties and make everything nice looking. I like to keep everything as tidy and nice looking as possible. You know, when you're dealing with wiring and this sort of stuff specifically, you really want to have everything orderly and well thought out and plan it beforehand. I keep the diagrams of all my electrical systems with me in the van, so if I ever need to do a repair like today, I can have a refresh immediately on how I set it up in the first place. It's like having a manual for your car in the glove box. Only a few people know offhand what the oil in their car uses. Uh, it's normally 5W20 or 30. What well, maybe an even better example is... Uh, who would ever need to remember what model of cabin air filter their car uses, or even if it has one? That's what the manual's good for. You know, I don't always remember which fuse is for the fridge in my solar power setup, but keeping things labeled, documented, and tidy is probably the best way to keep things running. They're really coming along. That wasn't even there yesterday. So we went back to double check out the uh, schematics, all artistically hand-drawn. It's beautiful. I'm basically like Da Vinci here. And uh, it looks like the power is flowing through. We've got the wires here that run down here into the solar controller, and it looks all good. We were at 14.7 volts, but now with four panels working, we're at 51.1 volts. And it's even overcast, so we can probably hit even 60 on a bright day. Now that we know everything's all working, let's make everything look nice up here. This is a beautiful, windy, cold, and full of construction day. It's very, uh, very loud. And here's another tip. Uh, only clean your flex solar panels with water. Don't use any sort of soap or chemicals that can eat away at it and it's not good. You might even void your warranty with that. I make 
very careful note not to do that. Here I'm just trying to get off a tape residue, but I really need something to scrape it more than just this, you know, piece of cloth. My plan isn't to scrape it clean, but to remove enough of it to see if I can re-tape onto that area. I'm a little hesitant to scrape it all off aggressively because I would probably scrape through and scratch the paint of the van. That is the drawback with the Gorilla Tape method we used. This is the dark side of building your own rig. It's a learning experience as you go. Still got the plastic on it. I put the solar panels on yesterday and I came back out to seal it with tape today. But I had left the plastic protective cover on. You know like when you get a piece of tech and they have that thin plastic screen on it that feels really satisfying to remove for whatever reason? It's, it's that film. Anyway, the sun had melted it to the panels. No damage, luckily, but it's really annoying to peel off. A uh, big mistake on my part. So what was going to take me only a few minutes to do is now going to take me a lot longer as I sit here and carefully remove this plastic mess. I really lucked out in the sense that leaving the plastic on didn't do any damage. You know, we can all make some silly mistakes, but that just gives me another point to talk about and I can impart my advice onto you. Don't do this. I once read that we learn best from failure. That's because it's imparted on us with consequences. So it's a great personal development situation when you fail. But what the study also showed is that we learn the same from watching somebody else fail. You know, us humans have the world's best empathetic self-inserting imagination. Our mental simulations die, so we don't have to. Anyway, when you watch someone fail at something, your mind self-inserts and experiences the empathetic situation of failing, but you yourself don't have to experience the negatives of failing, whether that be physical or social. And that's my gift to you here. Watch me do some stupid stuff and learn through watching, truly, the power of the human social ability. Victory is mine. Here's an awesome comparison that you don't normally get. Side by side, we've got the one year old panel and the brand new panel. You can just see a little bit of, I mean, what looks like uh, watermarks, but it's really just kind of stains, I guess. Still producing decently. Uh, I know the flexible panels do have a lower lifetime, lower, what is that called? Just a lower life lifespan than the uh, monocrystalline normal panels. But they're still kicking after at least this one and this one are, after about a year. So I put some tape back on, uh, which in my mind helps with the aerodynamics. I don't know if that's true or not. It's hard to get it to stick where the first tape left residue. I'll have to think of something, uh, how to fix that. Though I'm thinking that I might not even need the tape since the Velcro was stronger than I ever could have imagined. It needs a little bit more tidying to make it really nice, but the energy is flowing better than ever, which means I can keep everything working, like the fridge and, you know, you gotta keep that food cold. The link for all the parts I use in the solar power system are in the video description, and there's the full solar playlist link too, which covers everything in depth on how to do every section of it. I'm told it helps explain things very well, even if you don't have any previous knowledge, though I'm definitely biased since I made the videos myself. <laughs> Let me know if you have any questions and I'll give a shot to answer them. You know, I'm not a doctor, so take my advice with a grain of salt. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me today. I will catch you next video.